Hi, welcome to my talk on Istio at Influx Data. Um, very briefly, who I am. Uh, I'm, I'm Giacomo Tirabassi. I'm Italian. Uh, I'm an SRE at Influx Data. And we keep, uh, with my team, we keep Cloud2 uh, running. It's our SaaS offering just came out last year. Um, running Kubernetes since version 1.8, weird flex, I know, gig stuff. Um, and I really, really like to travel, eat, cook, and just repeat it again when it's not COVID-19 uh, problems around. But really, that's what I do all day. It's very much re working remotely. This is what my day lo looks like. What we're going to cover today, it's uh, what is a service mesh? Uh, it's, still, it's a service mesh. Uh, so very generic talk about what, what it is and why we need it, how we run it, uh, the outcome of it, and the uh, future, future roadmap of it. Um, so what is a service mesh? Uh, we have different alternatives of it. I'm gonna talk, uh, I'm gonna refer to Istio as a synonym of a service mesh, it's just an implementation. Uh, comes from Google, it's still not donated to a, a foundation, which is make some people uncomfortable, but for now, uh, Google is the main contributor with IBM and Red App. Uh, there are alternatives to it. Uh, Linkerd, it was created a little bit before Istio, um, but it was donated to the CNCF and created by Buoyant. It's, uh, Linkerd is the, is the only service mesh around which is not using Envoy proxy as a data plane proxy. Um, Console Connect is the new kid on the block, but as all, uh, comes from Ashikor, which is a great company. And um, I'm gonna watch and see what's come out of it because it's gonna be a great challenge. Um, so we're gonna talk about Istio today. And uh, that's what we run instead of Influx Data. We had this uh, alternative discussion early on couple, like last year when we decided to get a mesh and Istio was the most mature and solid product out there. So what is a service mesh? Uh, this is probably the most important and most discussed problem around the, um, the last uh, very buzzwordy. And uh, what a service mesh is, is extract functionalities out of your application into the platform itself, uh, which those functionalities are around networking, uh, security and observability. Networking functionalities are very much about retries, timeout, rate limiting your application, circuit breaking and canary. This is in the idea of microservices. Now it's the microservice realm. They were talking, the microservice was a topic for the last about 20 years of software engineering, probably 15. But nobody really, like everybody was telling about, I oh, you should use microservice. Everybody should use microservices, but nobody was telling you how to use those, how to monitor those, how to reason about those, how to uh, get security and functionalities. Um, until now where we have a certain mesh which makes things a little bit better. It doesn't solve all of the problems, but it makes things a little bit more standard, which is awesome when you have hundreds of different microservices running in your infrastructure and you have to re-implement things all over the place and keep those things in sync, which we all know that at best it doesn't happen and at worst it just happens in a weird way. Um, again, security, super, super hard to make security in this also not just a uh, microservice oriented uh, uh, scenario but also in a cloud native where you have containers and you are, have you're running on multiple clouds where all the things are different so you have to have a way to have, make sense of this so you have to have a standard way of securing applications all around the globe your data center in your cloud and making those communicate to each other uh, also observability again we want to have uh, uh, all of the applications want to have common standards. So we want to reason about a platform. We want to reason about applications. And um, we don't necessarily uh, have the authority of changing one tracing uh, implementation in one application or another. Access log between uh, application may differ. We want to have a, same, separate, a single way of uh, having those logs. And again, protocol specific metrics where with container and container platforms, um, we got a little bit better than before because now we get all of the containers uh, which we're running. We have CPU, memory, disk, and even network um, inputs and outputs. We already got them for free uh, running a Kubernetes, Nomad, or Mesos uh, platform. But now we want to, we care about the protocol itself. We want to we want to know how many HTTP requests this service has uh, received or has sent out uh, to let's say S3 bucket. 
we want to debug this. We want to be able to access our, like our AWS bill. It's so high on S3 calls. We want to understand which application is calling which service. And, um, and service mesh enables all of this uh, observability. And this is uh, the same for all of the services. Um, if you use Kubernetes or some other container orchestration, uh, Kubernetes stands to a, is to a Linux process what Istio is a to HTTP request. So the same way that Kubernetes orchestrates a Linux process into containers and you can run it on thousands of machines, the same way you have Istio which orchestrates HTTP requests. I know some of you may say, okay, but Kubernetes has services and they have some networking capabilities with ingresses, but really it, um, Kubernetes doesn't care about the uh, your HTTP request. It doesn't have capabilities to understand those. Istio has APIs specific for protocols. You're gonna have HTTP, HTTPS, gRPC, other even um, application specific like Redis, uh, understanding of the Redis protocols. So you can have Redis or MySQL or Kafka application metrics and capabilities, uh, which is amazing from a platform perspective. Why does this make sense? Um, because we all like the Unix philosophy and we like the idea of that doing one thing and doing it well. Um, there are many, some of these functionality are already in, in your application, in my application, in everybody's application, but it doesn't mean that they are implemented well. Uh, some of the uh, languages are just slow and they are not performant and we don't want to make, we don't want to have tracing implementation which are slow and they can slow down my application. Um, we want we don't want the tries every every library that you use has different implementation policies and we want to have a common how many of you know what's the default timeout uh, configuration for your language and they're all different and in many cases they are changed by your application developer so this is very confusing and very hard to reason about these problems when you have different configuration and different implementation so let's uh, separate this. Again, also the other problem is that multiple languages are running in our platform right now. Istrix uh, is uh, probably the most notorious. Uh, it's a library created by Netflix, which is Java. And they created it because they were running all Java application and they created this library, which took care of uh, this problem at Netflix. We're running timeouts, networking problems, uh, retries, circuit breaking, but it's Java only. And if you're gonna have to re-implement it, it's gonna be different, no matter what. Different, and also different performance, different um, latency implementation, different backends. Uh, so this makes it very hard. Um, the way that Istio uh, works is that you have a control plane and then you have a data plane. A data plane is a, where your application are running and you're gonna have Envoy proxy, which is a very super performant proxy written in C++ uh, as a sidecar to your application. So uh, every a network request is going to go through um, Envoy to your application. And again, also the traffic going out of your application is gonna go through Envoy. Um, so in this implementation, you have to you want to have something very, very performant to not impact latency or uh, throughput of your application. Also security wise, um, you're gonna, there is this uh, very, very good book from O'Reilly called Zero Trust Networks. And the idea is that, um, we're still very much used uh, to a kind of 80s or 90s form of architecture from in our networking where we trust everything that's in our VPC and we shouldn't. Um, we have policies from outdoor traffic, out, outside traffic to come into the VPC, but once the traffic, once packets are into our VPC, we can assume they are secure or safe and um, that should not be the case. We should not trust um, our applications because we don't know them um, we don't control them 100%. Um, we use every every application uses open source libraries. There was a big problem last year with npm library so that was compromised. So um, we cannot make sure we don't have the time, we don't have the people, we don't have uh, the money to make sure that audit every single open source library that we use. Also, we don't have the time, money to implement every single component in our infrastructure. We are going to use open source and closed source uh, components in our infrastructure for databases, queues, and external services. So we don't, need, we don't, we cannot possibly have this, um, uh, make sure that everything is super safe 100 times. And uh, if you worked in the cloud native realm, you know that things move at a, 
amazing speed. It's very frustrating sometimes because you need to keep up with so many things changing, so many version updates that you don't even have time to maybe sometimes go through the full change log, um, which is again fine if you have some uh, if your platform pr protects you from um, this kind of problems. If your platforms um, and your app developer can define, okay, my I have a new microservice. This microservice needs to talk to microservice A, B, and C. Then if this microservice is compromised, then it's going to only uh, be allowed to talk to A, B, and C. It's not, it's not allowed to talk to the main, data, the main database, the main microservice, the uh, core or um, payment service that we're running, uh, which is, makes things much more safe. And all of this, since it's API driven, um, can be defined and CRD driven in Kubernetes, can be driven by app developer themselves. They can have a list of things. They can define things. So they are not bound to talk to the CSAD or the SRE or the DevOps the guy and say, okay, I need to have access to this. Which is again, empowering the developer with features that usually are, they used to only um, be able to change by the sysadmin of the system. Um, this is usually what, when we talk about Istio, it's that you have a crappy, crappy application and then Istio is used as a solution to it. This is a ready thread, I'm not making this up. Um, it's, it's very powerful. Istio can be used as a solution to understand your application better if you don't. And we all know this uh, like crappy application. It's not really crappy application because all applications are crappy applications. Software is changing, evolving, and the developer who wrote application number one left two years ago and nobody really knows what's going on and some part of the code are really obscure and some part like nobody knows what they're doing but as soon as you try refactoring something breaks and uh, same things with testing is that when you want to refactor things you need to understand how things work and you want to have a baseline understanding of the performance of it so you can uh, you can uh, refactor the application but you need to understand how the application is performing and Istio is very good at doing this um, yeah, but that's the problem is that not all app developers are changing this. It's very much about the platform engineer, which enables uh, this application to be inside of the mesh and uh, to be run the mesh. Why do we need the service mesh? And specifically, why do we need it in Influx data in our Cloud2 uh, offering? We Our reasoning uh, very much about, uh, there are tons of features as described. Well, we only needed to. We wanted to be able to do canary deployments. We wanted to be able to direct 10% of the traffic coming into the platform to a specific new service. We're making big changes and um, defining better SLAs as, as, as allows. In our team, we need to define when an application is performing well. Like it's not only, it's not easy to define when an application is performing well. There are uh, tons of things that can go wrong. And if there are a spike of 500, um, coming from your application, it doesn't mean the application is bad. That there are, again, there are so many parts of the stack that can go wrong. So these are the uh, driving factor. We are really enjoying working with Istio and uh, we're going to improve it. But these are the reasons that we they got us through the door and um, it's a good reason. Um, there are some challenges, nothing is for free, and uh, we're gonna get some problems, as always. Uh, more complexity, always, always, always more complexity. Cloud native infrastructure, we're gonna have multiple layers of things. We're gonna have a cloud provider. Uh, this is, is, can be AWS, Google, Azure, or even uh, on-prem installations, um, they can have this uh, complexity. Uh, you have gonna have a Linux OS or if you want to have like very hard time, you can have even Windows. You're gonna have containers complexity. You're gonna have Kubernetes, which in itself it's probably can be divided into more like three or four more layers. And um, uh, Kubernetes is not opinionated on the networking stack, so you're gonna have understanding what your choice of CNI, which is running in your cluster. And then you're gonna have your service mesh. So this complexity, you're gonna be paying for it with people training with understanding uh, when you're gonna have an outage or a bug, which part, which stack, uh, yeah, I even forgot one, the application. So um, which which part of this uh, stack, it's where is the problem? Um, and we just say, okay, this is fine. 
Like we're getting used to this, but this is not free. We, you need to invest in training. You need to invest into um, uh, training your people and understanding the whole stack to everybody. So when you get to debugging, if it's a networking problem, you know where to kind of, um, if it's a scheduling problem, you know to go to Kubernetes. If it's a networking problem, you know you need to go to Istio or CNI. Uh, or if it's a um, resource problem, maybe it's your cloud provider, which is like pulling resources out of you. Um, so this is a, it's a problem, it's a, it's a challenge. It's not something that you get for free. Um, and also there is another challenge, which is migrating service, production services. We're running in Kubernetes, which makes things a little bit easier. But again, uh, you're basically uh, putting a layer on top of your networking because all of the traffic to and from your application is going through a, another piece. It's just not uh, the AWS uh, cloud provider networking stack. It's not just uh, the node stack, the VM stack. It's not just Kubernetes stack. Um, it's also Envoy now. So it very much feels like something like this, doing this every time you do an upgrade or Istio or just when we introduced Istio the first time in our production services, it was very much about um, switching things one per one and making sure that the service was still uh, available to the users performing as expected. Um, so how do we install and run? now that we defined what the, why do we do this and why like we got carried on to this adventure, like why do we, how do we run this? And we run it, from version 1.2, um, we are now at 1.6, the upstream, which was released uh, a couple months ago. And um, so from 1.2 to 1.4, uh, we, we kept our own fork of the installation. The installation from the beginning of time uh, of Istio was um, done with uh, Helm, which is not something that we use internally. We use JSON it to manage our installation with Argo CD for continuous deployments. Um, so we basically kept a fork of the installation and every time we need to do an update, we have to re-template all of the YAML code from Helm and make understanding what's the difference with the new installation and the new version and basically reconcile that, which is not something that was fun every time you need to update, it was like a week of work and making sure that everything worked again as uh, intended. And it was a configuration, a configuration mess. To work Istio needed uh, five to six config maps with multiple files uh, with multiple values which needs to um, combine with each other it's like not a fun experience from one of five though they introduce uh, from one of four introducing an alpha state and one of five uh, more stable it's an easy operator which makes things uh, if you're familiar with operators kubernetes it's a, a way to abstract complexity from your deployment so you don't you're not in charge of deploying your old things you just say i want istio control plane i want an istio mesh and the operator is going to deliver and install all of the necessary pieces the way you intend. Um, also, there was a change uh, in the control plane of Istio in 1.5 from out of five or six control plane components, microservices, they reduced one, they went back to the monolith. So now we have Istio D running in the control plane, which is just one service. We can scale it up and down, but it's just one uh, service, which is great uh, for um, dealing with complexity in that area and um, managing the Istio again uh, for the platform. Uh, we, have a, a open, we have open source uh, the way we install it and um, Istio has this idea of profiles, which is uh, the way that basically there are lots of components of Istio and you can define which profile with the profiles which you want to install. And we hope for the near future to be able to upstream our profile so that you can install Istio with the InfluxDB profile. So you get all of the things that um, uh, we install and you can install it much, much easier. We have a, a readme, we have documentation to how do we install it and how you can install the same way we do, we, uh, but uh, it's not as easy as, we, as I like it to be. Uh, but we have a special installation. Istio is notoriously known to be very tight with Prometheus. Uh, again, Istio, one of the three main part of Istio, it's observability. So if you remove one of this part and Prometheus, it's very much the heart of the observability part. So uh, there was a component called Mixer, which was aggregating all of the metrics. And uh, until 1.3, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, there was this component. Uh, it's now being removed in 1.5. Um, so things are a little bit changed. Um, but with Telegraph, we were able to scrape Mixer with the Prometheus endpoint uh, for metrics. Now things have changed, so we don't have any more mixer, but it's Envoy, which holds all of the information for Istio. 
all of the data for Istio. And um, some of you may not know, but um, uh, the way that Envoy is using in Istio is very much about Prometheus. So you're gonna scrape uh, in the default installation here, East, uh, Prometheus is going to scrape Envoy for data, but uh, Envoy also has a stats the output. So we can use Telegraph, uh, we have a deployment in every cluster of a three to five uh, Telegraph um, pod, which are setting stats the configurations, uh, which is amazing because we can say, we can then get this data through uh, stats Z and we don't need to scrape a bunch of endpoints. And uh, we can use this, this feature to adapt uh, the installation with our Prometheus. Um, as always, as always uh, when you install something in production, sooner or later it comes an outage. And this was our first, a uh, couple of months ago, we had our first Istio cause outage in the platform. And uh, was we were running Istio 1.3. And um, it was very, very weird at first because we deployed a service um, on a totally unrelated project in the same cluster uh, for in production on for an infra application and we just define a, a Kubernetes service with the port name HTTP and a port number 443. If you're familiar with Istio, um, the name of, this, of the port in Istio has a meaning to, uh, to Istio. It, has, uh, it carries uh, uh, significance, carry meanings. And basically this change, uh, it's a bug, um, broke all of our communication with, uh, from, the pod, from the pods running in the mesh to expose uh, HTTPS services. So if you wanted to communicate from a pod in within the mesh, if you wanted to communicate to S3 buckets, pod zero, or just any internal HTTPS expose services, the, the, those connections were just not uh, working anymore. Super, uh, was not fun to debug, was not, uh, was super fun to debug, it was not easy. And uh, we found at the end, this is like, it's a known issue. Um, it was also, fixed upstream in 1.4 release. It's not really fixed because this is the way, the, the buzz is caused the way, by the way, Istio D configures the Envoy proxy. Um, so basically in the 1.4 release, they just blocked uh, with the, there is there is a, some sort of configuration checking. So it basically blocks, um, you cannot have this combination of HTTP name and on port 443. And, but we cannot wait we could not wait at the time for a new release. Um, so we just created the conf test the next morning on after the outage, just a, a conf test and we, this is the code, it's super, like it's 10 lines of code, which is make it super easy. And uh, now if you open a PR against our um, YAML uh, repositories for contributing code to the Kubernetes cluster, you're gonna get this test through. So if you commit by mistake, some service that has this combination, you're not gonna be allowed to do that. Um, just super simple way. I was like, again, 10 lines of Rigo code, which is thank you to OPA and ConfTest. Um, what are the benefits? Why are we doing all of this effort to do to get out? Of? Um, we get dashboards and we get alerts and we get data. Uh, so this is dashboard. This is a, one of the main dashboards that we have. And it, this is what we call, what I would call a vanity dashboard. This is not something that um, you should look all the time. It's very much about what uh, all of the services are exposing. Um, so uh, this dashboard is in particular, it's uh, the columns are environment. So we have different cluster running in our infrastructure and environment is just a cluster. Um, you may have testing, production, uh, multiple cloud providers, uh, multiple between test environment. Um, and you have the service name and then you have the, the uh, 200s, 300s, 400s, 500s, the total request, HTTP request are going through this. Uh, so, and the big number uh, on top, uh, basically for now, is just a very simple uh, number of total requests uh, or a number of 500 requests uh, against the total number of requests. Um, so this is uh, uh, not something I will, like you should not look at this uh, dashboard all day long, uh, but this is very useful. So uh, after this dashboard was, uh, uh, was created, it was very easy to configure alerts for it. So we can say, okay, if a service has more than 2% or 1% error rate for hundreds, then that's a page uh, because it's it's not something normal. It's not something that we expect from a platform. Another thing that in the same dashboard, uh, just one line below, it's uh, um, even if a service has all 200s, but those um, 
uh, services are exposing those 200, are responding to those 200 in five to seven seconds, that's not good, that's too long. Uh, even if you're running, we are running a, a DB as a service. Um, the DB, uh, you have queries, so we can trigger, and those queries can may take longer. So we have different the thresholds. So if you're just doing a simple API call, uh, you are expected to be finished within, like, let's say, 100 milliseconds. But if you're making a, a query call, you're expected to finish within three, three to five seconds. So we can we we monitor latency, and again with this dashboard. We can see the a, 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 big, a bit of summary and also drive alerts to get page uh, the right team for the right service. Um, once the team get page, what do they do? Uh, they head to this dashboard. This is a service drill down. If your service has a problem, you want to have a like a, you don't want to get the logs of the service. You can get the logs of the service, but the first thing is that what's going on with the service, like a more generic. Um, so these are the Istio metrics for that service. You're gonna get all of the incoming requests and outgoing requests uh, uh, to that service itself. So you're gonna see what's going on if you have a spike in some request, then you're gonna understand which service is calling you and um, why and uh, how how it's performing. So maybe you understand there is an upstream problem. So your application may be, may, may, may be fine, but you have an upstream problem. Maybe S3 buckets, S3 service, just very, very slow at responding for that time because they're doing maintenance or something like that. So uh, this is uh, dark mode because everybody, it's dark mode, it's fun, but uh, if you like uh, light and your your eyes uh, don't burn, this is also, uh, this is different time frame. So that the one before was for one hour time frame. this is 24 hour visibility. So you understand uh, what's going on. And uh, this is going to be soon uh, available in the community templates for um, uh, influx data. Okay, what's next? Well, the, that's the, the big part. What's next for Istio? We deployed the initial site when we had um, production services. So we only enrolled a part, a, we were not sure that Istio was the right solution or we liked it, all of the things that was stable enough for us. So we only enrolled a couple of services into that. Now we are, we like it. We are uh, familiar with it. We're getting more and more knowledge about it. So we, we are ready to move forward. We want to do more things. Um, so we switched to the moni mixerless monitoring and we want to enroll more services. We want to enroll the all, micro, all the microservices for running the platform into Istio. And uh, till now we were running in, in, Ingress and Nginx, which is super, super solid product. Um, but uh, since we have Istio within the mesh, um, we get some weird uh, tracing data because the span ID doesn't get, comp it's, not complete, it's not complete because the ingress Nginx is not within the mesh. So um, I can go all, all of these features uh, in the next two to three months. Um, but now we can go further. Once we have all of the services into the mesh, we can get more and more, we can get um, basically, we can enforce mutual TLS. Uh, by default now, it's 1.5, 1.6. You get auto mutual TLS by default in your mesh. Um, this way, uh, you can authenticate all of the services against each other. So you can really say only accept traffic. Um, you can, uh, like, again, we, we need to talk about this migration because it's we're running production service. We're talking about production services. So uh, we want to be, okay, how do we do this in a safe way? We don't want to cut off production traffic by mistake. We want to be able to say, um, uh, enforce these policies, but only log out the drop request. So we can uh, define these policies, say, okay, on service A, you can only talk to service B and C. But if in the logs we say, okay, I was also talking to service D, then we can um, get this, um, we can uh, fix it before we actually enforce, uh, which is called mutual TLS strict policy, uh, which is the uh, configuration which says only allow uh, strict mutual TLS connection and doesn't allow any other configuration. So it's if it's a rogue application uh, gets deployed in your cluster, cannot communicate with your uh, production services. And moving forward again, we can uh, talk to uh, to cross region failover. So if it, a given a region in AWS fails, we can uh, reroute traffic to another region um, to serve different uh, requests and also contribute back to the to the project. Uh, Kiali, it's a very good visualization uh, project. This allows you to visualize the whole service in the mesh and which service are talking to which service 
and uh, what's the error rate or traffic um, uh, looks like. Uh, Kali only works with Prometheus right now. So we want to contribute the integration with InfoCB so that we can use it ourselves. We uh, force ourselves ourselves to run, to use InfoCB to monitor our cloud. So um, it's not, we don't have anything against Prometheus. It's just that we, want, we like to dock, uh, for, do for, for dock fooding ourselves to understand what's going on and to get also the product much, much in a better shape uh, for everybody to use. And that's uh, the end. Um, if you have any problem, questions, or configurations, please um, tweet me, link, uh, send me a LinkedIn, or uh, contact me at GitHub at GTRBASIL.